In any profession, there are dues to pay. In wrestling, though, there are fewer and fewer places to pay them. Two major circuits and a few fly-by-nights. For the young and the wrestlers, it's a real dilemma. How do you become a surgeon when there are only two hospitals on the continent? Hey, guys, do you think these are big enough for you? Oh, uh, it's too small. Too man. small, bigger too. <laughs> if he's not in the ring, a wrestler is either in the gym or the kitchen. You remember Chris and Lance from Friday Night Wrestling. They're starting out, wrestling whoever, wherever, whenever. Wrestling is everything for them, the steak and the sizzle. You were going to be a chartered accountant? Yeah, believe it or not. Um, I was in university, advanced business administration degree. I was going to be a chartered accountant. Uh, and then one day you just decided that, you know, this wasn't going to be enough. You know, nine to five in front of a calculator wasn't going to be it. And I think, you know, every kid growing up, no matter who you are, wants to be a superhero. Be it Captain America, oh, Superman. And you can be... And in pro wrestling, you can be a superhero. You can put on your tights, you can have, you know, a big S on your chest if you want it. You can have a mask if you want it, and you can be a superhero. You can go out there, if the crowd likes you, there'll be a bad guy out there for you to beat up, and the crowd will cheer you on. And the point is, when you put on your boots and you put on your tights and step into that ring, you're not you. You become your character. And if you don't become your character and you're the same as you are on the street, then who's going to want to see that? The dressing room is really a place of transformation. When the boys walk into the dressing room, they're Joe Blow with their suitcase. <laughs> Rather big Joe Blows, but Joe Blows with their suitcase. And when they're putting on their gear, their mental set changes. And, you know, a lot of people, it's when their music starts playing that they get into it mentally. Some people pace, stretch, whatever, and you start getting yourself psyched up. It's still you, but you definitely have to get psyched up and get mentally into it. How do you get from, from here, from Victoria Park on, on Friday nights to the WWF, the very time? It's hard work. And, it's, uh, and the desire to want to be there. Yeah, we came on the scene just almost like, just too late. You know, maybe six months after Stampede closes when we first started. So there was still, you know, rumblings of Stampede maybe starting up again. And there was even a few Stampede shows yeah. last year and stuff. But, it, you know, it's still not the Stampede run by Stu Hart, you know. Guys like Chris and myself are having to leave the country and even leave the continent to get our seasoning. You know, wrestling in Mexico, Japan, the places that the smaller promotions as well as they're not all regionalized into one big thing. Yeah. They've still got all their smaller promotions. That That's where younger guys are having to go. When you're starting out, you know, you think you're really good and you're in a regional promotion. Like when we were in CNWA, we started there and in about four months, we were the best that they had almost. And then an athlete like Johnny Smith, who's internationally known and just an incredible wrestler, showed up and we wrestled him. And we were just in awe at how good he was. It was almost as if a whole new sport opened up. It's actually quite funny when you talk about the high flying, which is like, you know, the aerial moves in the ring. And he does moves and I do moves that no one else does around here. And then you go to a place like Mexico or Japan where every single wrestler who is starting out does every single move. Everything. You learn that, you know, you're not nearly the hot shot you think. That's right, that's right. That's pretty humbling. Every pud and their dog does a moonsault, yeah. in all honesty. Really? You know, around here it's like, wow, Chris can do that. You go down there, every pud and their dog does it. But yeah. it's the guys that know when to do it and how to do it, you know, do it the best, oh, really? obviously, if you do it really smooth, but yeah. it's when to do it. That's right. So when the crowd's sitting back watching that match, they're ready for something. They're just aching for it. And when you get experience in your season, you can tell that the crowd's ready for something. And then if you can stick that big move then and hit it, the crowd's like, yeah, and they're sitting on the edge of their seat. If you're doing it all the time, you're sitting back going, well, that's neat, well, that's neat. You got to get them on the edge of their seat. That's right. You start to judge just how far you should go in each individual match. There's 50 people in the crowd, there's no TV. Should I do this completely crazy move where I might get injured? You know, there's 40,000 people and video crews and, and, and magazines. Should I do it? Yeah, I think I should. You know, you start to judge and start to make it worthwhile. If you do a hot move and you are going to get injured, make sure that someone's going to see it. And that's one thing that it, it, it takes a while to figure that out when you're first starting. Your first years are definitely hard. You know, it, it's hard to every single day go to the gym and work out. You know, I've been doing it for almost 11 years now. You get up, you go to the gym. It becomes a way of life and eventually isn't that hard anymore. And then it's, you know, continually going out and finding work. You know, there's guys in Calgary that wrestle that are trying to get into Rocky Mountain. It's like there's, everyone's constantly trying to get, mm -hmm. you know, 
Get a job. Get a job. Normal people say, what? You know, you waited for four hours by the phone and didn't get a phone call, and, and you still want to work there? And it's like, yeah, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, that's just the way things work, you know, because it, it sort of becomes one of the job descriptions. You have to be able to wait, and you have to be able to put up with a lot because that's just the nature of the business. It's the nature of the beast. I was supposed to go to Japan for a two-week tour in November with this one company. They're going to guarantee me 12 weeks next year. This is all a thing. I've got my gear packed. I'm all ready to go, and I'm hyped. And it's like, he hasn't phoned, he hasn't phoned, he hasn't phoned. And you're trying to get a hold of him, you can't get a hold of him. And it's, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's never happened. And there's so much of that. And it's hard not to go, oh, my career's in a dumper. Yeah. It's so hard not to do that. But that's the time that you pick yourself up, you go back to the gym, you make more phone calls or whatever. You know, there's, for every trip you get, there's at least six promised to you by somebody. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, paying your dues. Every wrestler that's ever wrestled, ever will wrestle, has got dues to pay. You pay them from the day you break in to probably the day you break out. When you're in that ring, it's the best thing in the world. Nothing can match it. Doesn't matter all the problems that you've gone through to get there. You can take them and throw them out the window because, man, you're in there right now, right then. Superhero. That's right. And at that point, who cares what you had to go through to get, 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 to get there? You're there. And it's, it's the best doesn't get any better.